Uh, what is this? Uh, we're going to try something new. We're putting a plant in the foreground. The foreground? Um, thematically appropriate. I would say the, the box is in the foreground, and, and, and I'm in the background. It's, uh, it's actually one of the cards in the game. What's in the game? I've been doing this for over five years. I haven't been in a game yet, and this thing is... What's it called? It's a snake plant or mother-in-law's tongue. Great. No. All right. Hi, I'm Daniel. Hi, I'm Gretchen. Welcome to Plumpy Thimble. Verdant is a two to four player card placement game designed by Molly Johnson, Robert Melvin, Aaron Mesburn, Kevin Russ, and Sean Stankiewicz. Published by Flat Out Games. The art was produced by Beth Sobel. In Verdant, players take turns drafting room or plant cards along with a corresponding item in the market row. They then place their chosen card adjacent to an already placed card in their home in front of them. When a card is taken, a green thumb token is placed onto the card in the row that wasn't taken, acting as a future incentive because when a card is taken, all green thumbs on it are taken as well. These green thumbs can be spent in various ways. Cards placed have to make a checkerboard pattern alternating rooms and plants, with the game ending once all players have created a 3x5 grid in front of them. When placed in your grid, you evaluate the plant cards to see if they get any verdancy tokens. This happens when the light condition of the surrounding rooms matches the type of light the plant needs. Once a plant earns its required verdancy points, tokens are removed and a pot is placed on the card to indicate that it will earn both its point value at the end of the game as well as the bonus for the type of pot used to plant it. The faster you can complete plant cards, the higher bonuses you get for doing so. But you can only earn a maximum of four verdancy points per plant just by placing rooms around it. And that's only if you do it perfectly. That's where the items come in. Spades, watering cans, and fertilizer can be played on your turn to add verdancy tokens to the plants in your house, making the decision not just about the card you need, but also about the item in its row. Green thumbs can also be spent to allow you to grab different items and restock the market with new items. These items consist of more than just things to help your plants grow. You can get cats, dogs, fish, and furniture to pack in the rooms. Each room has a specific color and pattern and specific type of plant that will score it end game points if it's surrounded by it. Once the game ends, you consult the list of potential end game scoring opportunities and whoever has the most points wins. This game is a lot. It is arguably easier to take a house plant and figure out where it would physically look best inside of an actual home than it is to understand how your scoring potential will work out in a game of Verdant. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not a bad thing. Flat Out Games has done a fantastic job of carving out a niche for itself in games that are simple to play but have strategic teeth and depth uh, and are extremely puzzly, a type of game that I've come to love over the last couple of years. And this is something that I emphasize in Flat Out Games' other titles that I've reviewed, specifically Cascadia and Calico, two other fantastic games with the same concept of, on your turn you have a very simple decision to make. You're, you're given limited options, but what you do with those options affects the end game and affects uh, not only the current course of the game, but the entire future of how you could pot potentially score points. Verdant fits right into that ideology. Simple, limited decisions on your turn, but what you do with those decisions and, and what you choose at the specific time have long-term effects for the course of the game. Every single action that you take is, is simply rolling out a tapestry of point potential for endgame scoring. Like its predecessors of Calico and uh, the more recently Cascadia, it is deceptively cranial. It is, I mean, that's honestly the biggest thing with this game is it is so deceptive. It's a game about houseplants. It's a game about pets and decorating a home. Um, it's cozy. It's comfortable. It looks like a game that you could sit down and just play while you're watching TV. Uh, I know for a fact that that doesn't always work because that was my intention when I originally started playing this game. And yeah, there are straight paths to points. You can take the most expensive plants and, and gain them points by just focusing on getting big plants and planting them fast. But by doing that, you're ignoring the other faucets of the game. The scoring methods in this game are numerous. And, and those scoring methods, I barely even touched the surface of in the rules explanation because I didn't want to take up too much time. Uh, you know what? I'll do a quick rundown. 
So you earn points for completed plants, you get points for extra verdancy tokens on plants, you get a bonus point for the type of pot that it was planted with, you get room bonuses, bonuses for the types of furniture and pets, the different types of furniture and pets you have in your house, you get a bonus for collecting every type of plant, every type of having every type of room. That was overwhelming at first. Seeing all those end game scoring potentials was honestly slightly concerning. But after one game, it clicked. It made sense. And it clicked in the sense that it wasn't, oh, I completely understand how to do this game and how to do it well. But it clicked in my mind what type of game this was and what type of game it wasn't. And that I think is the biggest thing you need to understand. Um, and honestly, not just with this game, but with most of Flat Out's titles that I have played. So I talked about how the game looks like this nice, comfortable game that you could sit down and play. Um, let's get into that a little bit because it does look nice. It's extremely cozy. All the illustrations are uh, gorgeous and just comfortable to look at. The graphic design makes sense in terms of the rooms and the patterns and, and every single one of the tokens. Well, that's because Beth Sobel knocked it out of the park again. Uh, she has presented an artifact of a game that says, this is comfortable, this is fun, this makes sense. There are a lot more tokens, a lot more pieces than you might initially expect when you open up the game. Uh, and all of them flow really well because at times they have to interact with each other. Tokens have to go on top of cards. Um, you take tokens off of cards and spend them. Everything meshes together really well. So not only does it look great, all of it makes sense. But again, it plays right into that deception. And I don't know if that was Beth's intention, but probably. The long and the short of it is, this is a game that I love. Um, and the reason being is that this particular type of game is something that over the last couple of years, I have, my tastes have personally been really enjoying. And I can see how that may not be the case for everyone. So go into it understanding that this is a deceptively cranial game. It is a game that will take more mental capacity than it initially lets on because it looks so calming. Everything makes sense. It's just that not everything is easy. So for me, Verdant is a big win. And I, uh, it's another huge home run for flat out games.